And now, for news and views of the right wing, here's BBC commentator Earl Pitts, American. You know what makes me sick? You know what makes me so angry? I want to lick a live battery terminal. <laughs> me and my buddy Dub decided to stop in for some chow on the way to the big gun and knife show. So we walk in one of them yuppie butt delis, and the waitress asked us what we want to eat. We said, what else? Blown his sandwiches. Well, she asked, what kind of bread you want on it? And I said, what kind of bread you got? She said, we got rye, dark rye, German rye, rye with curry waste seeds, pumpernickel, crescent rolls, sourdough bread, and something called Peter bread. <laughs> Peter bread? I mean, who on earth's going to eat a blown sandwich on something called Peter bread? <laughs> I said, ain't you got no wonder bread? You can't make a real man sandwich unless you've got Wonder Bread. Bread ain't supposed to look like some sissified French fudge. Real bread looks like drywall with crust. Wake up, America! If Wonder Bread was good enough to mail me a strong beer gut 12 ways, it's good enough to mail me a blowny sandwich in some yuppie deli. This country was built on white bread, and don't you forget it! I'm Earl Pitts, American. Pitts all. <laughs> well, I have this dream, and it's a dream about a car. Oh, no, it's a red car, and I'm driving through Norwood. Oh, no, wait, it's a yellow car, and I, I think it's Newport. <laughs> yeah, I'm driving through Newport, but I'm driving with my dog, Crepso. No. Crepso is driving. Oh, this is nice. Wait, why Crepso? I'm driving with my lovely wife, Iona. No, it's Crepso. Gnarly Motors, built for the confused race. And sure, your old pal Ranger Bob bought to you by Mush. <laughs> when it's hot mush time at breakfast, then it's time for us to eat. Dang, let me. Oh, well, I guess it's time for the old Ranger Bob show. How you doing there, sidewalkers? Hey, what? We'll have our craft lesson today. Shall y'all bring from home what Ranger Bob told you to last week? Yeah! yeah! Mommy's underwear. Yeah. <laughs> Just put her in the old bath, the old sack, the old pack sack. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Ranger Bob's gonna take these, uh, crafts home, and, uh, we'll do some more crafts next week. Yeah! yeah! Okay, buckaroos, time once again for the time-honored prairie wilderness tradition of, simply said, Dealing with the Red Man. Who bought the Red Man? Me! <laughs> Glad to see you whippersnappers all packed for the trail. <laughs> now, Buckaroos won't tell you when you're chewing the Red Man, be sure and not get any the juice on your white party dress. And also, don't get none on Ranger Bob's boots. Hey, hold your horses. You hear that music? You know what it's time for? Time to toss your cookie. Let's say toss your cookie. First one that loses his lunch gets to stay home from school tomorrow. Yeah! <laughs> well, that's it for today, buckaroos. This year's your old pal Ranger Bob saying, this year's your old pal Ranger Bob saying, adios, muchachos. Broadbank Broadcasting Corporation presents will return after station identification. Hallelujah! The little TV church of the white winged gospel truth is on the air. Oh, let's open today with a reading from the book of Hominomines. It's not your Old Testament, not your New Testament, but your present testament writ by me. Now, this is one of my favorite passages. Hominomines 316, and it goeth on us to say it, Yea, verily, though I walketh through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I am packing a rod. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but even the power, though, of the 357 Magnum cannot put us out of our misery today, flock. 
And I come today to ease that burden. I'm talking about that biblical relic, the mystery of the ages, the shroud of Turin. Amen. Yea, flock, but there are skeptics in this world, heathen, miserable, wretched skeptics. And what do they say? They say the Shroud of Turin is a forgery, yea, a hoax, a sham, as phony as Jessica Hans intended. <laughs> And I can't believe it myself, Flock. No, I wanted to see this with mine own eyes. So I called and requested the shroud. <laughs> and, it came. and I took the shroud with my own hands, these hands. And I looked at it with my own eyes, these eyes. And I thought, biblical bamboozle. <laughs> and at that moment, I knew there was only one thing I could do. That's right. Effective today. We're marking down every last piece in our Shroud of Turin linen sale. <laughs> oh, that's right. Twin, full, queen, king. The Shroud of Turin linen sale. They may not be authentic. But they are machine washable. Oh, yes. The Shroud of Turin proved to be a proper hoax, a forgery, a forgery, a forgery. Carbon dating test did fail. And that's why we're having this big sale. The test was taken and critics scoffed. But they are still, they are still, they are still 50% off. And I'll see you all during my personal appearance at the Reverend Skaggs Antiquity Clearance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Don't worry, Flock. When the Shroud of Turin Linen is gone, we'll be getting in a shipment of Shroud of Elvis Linen, authenticated <laughs> by the bacon stains. Oh, don't make me holler. Don't make me shout. Turn them pockets inside out. <laughs> Say me in, Flock. Close enough. Gotcha. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Dan Buckles, broadcasting from my intellectual tower into your valley of ignorance. And because I really care. Every Tuesday, we invite you crime dogs to lick crime. Tonight, our crime dog reporter, Pablo La Parento, is at the scene of a bank robbery. Pablo La? Dan, the second First National Bank behind me was a scene of perhaps the most creative crime this month. This afternoon, an unidentified person drove up to this drive through window. What happened next was a first for teller Carol Newberry, who has worked at the bank for four years. It seemed like a very polite person. I didn't think anything unusual, just a customer who likes skiing. At 2.15 p.m., a person in an average-looking blue car placed a small-caliber firearm and a hold-up note into the transaction tube. The person waited patiently as the transaction was sent through the system. The teller complied with the bank's policy of non-resistance and did exactly as the note said. She placed exactly $7,644.37 in unmarked bills into the tube and returned them. The person thanked her and drove away. Thank you. Witnesses have worked with the police artist to identify this person. The robber is said to be either male or female, wearing a black ski mask with a maroon and gray stripe, and sitting in a car. If you have seen this man or woman, call the Crime Dog Hotline. As always, your identity will be kept confidential. And help us to lick crime. Hello there. I'm a big fat falling guy with a stubby cigar in his mouth and his pants half zip from the BBC Home Shopping Show. And this time, I'm being honest with you. When I say, don't you just hate it when you get all dressed up for a party and then when you get in your car, your seatbelt gets you right across the yin-yang. Oh, that hurts. But you got to wear your seatbelt because that's the law. But now, binding uncomfortable seatbelts are no longer a problem. Not with Big Fat's new fake seatbelt shirt. <laughs> what an idea. Just remember, when you're being rushed to the emergency ward, you're striking a blow for rugged individualism. You're striking out against big government. 
you're striking your windshield at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. And remember, every big fat fake seatbelt comes with a fake airbag. <laughs> For even more pretend safety. Call right now. We got operators standing by. And now, let's get back to our show. It's a scream. BBC, it's a scream. Hello. I'm a Joe DeBoss. This is my network. I know it's gonna make you smile. If not, maybe Bernie come by your house and stick a coat hanger in your mouth. That'll make him smile, boss. <laughs> He's a good boy. Hey, Bernie, let's start off by making fun of the nuns. Right, boss. Hi, this is Angry Albert. And here's the heavyweight lineup on Thursday night when the BBC brings you those glorious nuns of wrestling. <laughs> the action when Sister Kate of St. Peter and Chains takes on the Russian Mother Superior. <laughs> and the singing nun hits a high note of guy. I want to say to the Russian Mother Superior, I want you, Mother, this time, bring your rosary, Mother, because you're going to need it. Uh oh, it's the Russian Mother Superior. Your malachal weaklings mean nothing to me. Mother Superior, you're a bad habit, and I mean to break you. <laughs> Don't miss the action this Thursday night as the glorious nuns of wrestling come back to BBC. Don't miss the heavenly hijinks of those glorious nuns of wrestling Thursday night on BBC. Well, that's my BBC. I'm a really like it. But perhaps you have a positive viewpoint. And maybe I'll take these two fingers, jam them up your only two nose holes, and dangle you over a memo spike till you change your mind. <laughs> Bernie's got a point. Maybe you should keep a your opinion uh, to yourself. Have a happy day. Ah! It's a scream. <laughs> BBC, it's a scream. I'm Dan Buckle. Broadcasting from my tower of ignorance into your valley of intellect. No, wait. Broadcasting from my tower. Okay. <clears throat> You're a bad habit, and I mean to break you. <laughs> that hurt me. <laughs> Don't miss the action this Thursday night. The glorious nuns are resting on BBC. <laughs> 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 Don't make me shout and turn them pockets inside out and sail in the ring got rid of Who barked the red man? Me! <laughs> Let's see you buckaroos all pack for the trail. <laughs> buckaroos? Buckaroos. <laughs> A fake airbag. <laughs> it worked for me. God, so oh, that's God. great. For me, even more than him. They really. Can't. I do it. I do it. Yeah. I do it. Impression of Bush. Do you? Let's hear it. I'm George Bush. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And now, President Bush is saying it. Vice President Dan Ford's going to take an active part in the war on drugs. Vice President Dan Ford. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. I'll tell you what it's making me laugh so hard, Bernie wet his pants. <laughs> that would work. BBC, it's a scream. <laughs> BBC, it's a scream. <laughs> BBC, it's a scream. <laughs> BBC. <laughs> any percussion regarding pelvic overtones on this program was wholly ecumenical, and any dismemberment of characters, whether deceased or dead, is purely sacrificial and does not refract a normal defecation emanating from this station. <laughs>